Saturday. The opening. I didn't get to meet Michael Schamberg when he was alive, and yet here I find myself floating through his traces, inhabiting a landscape carved out by his spirit. And where am I exactly? An art space, a little box within a bigger box, within the great big conceptual box, people come here to buy objects from other people whose job it is to infuse those objects with meaning. Meaning. Where's that ever supposed to come from? If we manage to gather in this space and pry loose the lids of our minds and briefly glimpse some fragile, mysterious light together, will even that open onto a lasting or somehow measurable shift in our usual relationships to existence? Is there an understanding that can be achieved? And is that what meaning ultimately means? Meanwhile, Whatever there is to be found here, a few thousand people have shown up looking for it tonight. Am I safe in this place? I know Michael would want me to feel that I am. Tonight I watched a giant paper mache turtle crawl across the floor of the Cité des Arts as new wave music played. In the next room a baby cried, and for a moment I was taken with the idea that everyone can be safe everywhere if we're all right frame of mind. Perhaps just to imagine this in a world where it feels so ridiculous to say it is already a heartening exercise. But on these walls hang hundreds of frames of mind, and between these walls they parade countlessly, and our safety is only whatever we're willing to believe it is. I decide that it means something to be surrounded by those who come in search of art. But from the size and diversity of the crowd, it is clear that exactly what it means is very much still in question. I shall resume my research into this matter tomorrow. Sunday, day two. Okay, forget I said anything about meaning. Forget for a moment the objects and the walls. Maybe the real fire around which we're all here trying to warm our hands is the idea that the human mind can generate some kind of value independent of demonstrable utility. Or is that just another way of thinking about me? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, I'm going to test my idea by closing my eyes for a few seconds and attempting to generate something of value. There. I think I did it. Did you feel it too? That's the tricky part. Agreement. Even Adam's struggle with this. It is one thing to make, and another thing to establish a consensus that something has been made. Still, another thing is that even the mind that makes is in the universe that unmakes. Just behind every hand that weaves is the hand that unravels, the hand that unstitches everything back into the void. Or that isn't even a hand, but the raveling unravels itself whether we agree about it or not. Stories unwrite themselves, words unspeak. Then each new hole that emerges we begin again to fill. I just heard somebody say something about process. But if there isn't any fighting it, and there isn't any slowing it down, then what is the difference between making sense of it and distracting ourselves from it? This question makes me miss talking about the walls. Sometimes all we have is the context within which we try to discuss the larger context. I can't see the sky from here, but I know it's out there waiting for us all when we leave. 
At least the crowd was smaller today, so I finally had a chance to watch some of the video installations. More frames of lines per second passing through and dispersing back out into space full of color and lines, objects and ideas, all kinds of testimony, riding waves, insinuating various meanings and values in its wake. Monday. I awoke this morning having abandoned the ideas of meaning and value in my sleep. Today there is only space, and within it, the potential for there to arise points of unexpected connection between people and concepts. Connections being neither good nor bad, nor necessarily signifying anything beyond themselves. Connections as they are between molecules, which do or don't change dramatically when they touch. We do or don't react with volatility. We do or don't experience catharsis. Tonight, someone renamed all the stops on the Paris Metro, divorcing points of reference and connection from their familiar signifiers, suggesting a liberation of the mind that might spread throughout the city. And I wanted it to deliver me. I wanted to feel the floor moving under me, but my thoughts failed to escape their tether to the unreality of the supposedly real world. Little controversies between the galleries, little barricades around the performance space, protocols and turf wars, a whole micro-society seeping in through the cracks. I went for a walk to clear my head, and one of the gallerists tried to talk to me about politics. My spirit trembled. I wanted to fall to my knees and beg the great ineffable abstract to forgive me for being so trapped in the small, linear parameters of my experience. I wanted something to break through the conventions of behavior in the environment and give me the permission to cry. I sat in the turtle space, feeling fragile but contained like liquid in a thin paper cup. I searched myself for a way to harness my sudden vulnerability and rise above the perspective by which I felt so sobbing. And then I saw it was time to go home. Tomorrow there is supposed to be music. I hold my hope. Tuesday. I arrived today uneasy, unsure if yesterday's disconnection was the work of external forces or only the fallout of my own emotional weather. I sat silently on the floor and endeavored to feel as openly and directly as I could. After a few minutes, an artist came in, frustrated, annoyed, a threatening cloud of vibes. Then after some dispute over practical matters, delivered a heartbreaking song and promptly disappeared. Next, an old friend took up a Fender Telecaster and rolled waves of mystic calm through an amplifier and throughout the room like slowly spilling honey. The space felt both menaced and reclaimed, like a psychic battlefield. Then everyone was gone, and it was once again whatever it had been before. When someone opens themselves in public like that, it permeates the dynamic. But equally, when you let your guard down in a place like this, it is impossible not to feel surrounded by the people who don't. They are immediately magnified, like shadows by a bright light. Their darkness looms against the high white walls, and yet the walls are covered with art. Shouldn't it be the artists by whom we all feel surrounded? Or is the art on the walls at too safe a distance, like windows through which we are not obligated to look? Windows onto a storm that doesn't really threaten us because we're all still inside. And the artists aren't here to insist for themselves on how open their windows are or how urgent their storm is except in the case of these performances, which are perceived as threatening to the commerce of our neighbors. But imagine if nothing was threatening. 
Imagine if nothing reminded us of the storm. Imagine if we forgot somehow that what rattles these windows is the evidence of our struggles with questions that are mighty and large. The echoes of human screams in the night. This I don't want to forget. I want to stick my head through a window and listen for the screams. Wednesday. Today I found out that tomorrow evening will be a party at which an award is presented to the best stand in the festival. I am not totally sure of what this means. There are all these objects which each transmit some fraction of reality or unreality in which we might partially recognize ourselves while hopefully not recognizing the method too easily. I imagine that someone with a track record for recognizing themselves in lots of different kinds of objects will tell us all where they were most satisfied to have recognized themselves this week, and we will all clap. My goal for today is to transmit something in which some of you might partially recognize yourselves. I've made some notes. One, I am going to die. Two, panic-stricken by the philosophical implications of the night sky. Three, wrestling with the importance of honesty under the constant threat of loneliness. Four, incessantly pestered by questions about fucking craft. Five, I've left number five blank. Now maybe, if I could just ball all that up somehow and throw it, throw it through a window, and if I get lucky, Hit somebody. <laughs> now, for my big confession, I too have made an object. Little window, little life raft, little desperate scream in a storm, a little reality that wonders if it will become less real should it go unrecognized. My instinct is always to deny this question, to run from it, to hide from it, to insist that everyone must surely recognize themselves in any gesture that is sincere enough. This evening, a woman went outside and sang her lungs out into the pouring rain. What can be measured in this? I can only say yes. And yet, someone complained about the crowd. Someone always judges and keeps score. Someone owns the land and the food trucks. Someone turns the electricity on and off. Maybe this should make me feel like all the artists are on the same team, but I admit it makes me care all the more for the ones who sing in the rain, for they are the ones who give me courage. Thursday. Have I been naive here? Drifting in a lazy fantasy about what art is. I would like to fight for people who invest their mortal time in exploring their fragile connection to something larger than their grasp. But it is probably only at my most insecure that I reach for the easy comfort of professing sympathy for all art. More honest is that I am tired of hearing us congratulate each other for entertainment. Tired of the clever and the funny. I want to invoke the big storm. I want to be rained on, cleansed of intellect. I want to see something sacred, something that scorches the bullshit from my eyes and takes me weeping into its arms. Something that erases me entirely, delivers me from the hell of endless conscious awareness. Something to recall the earliest gesture of creation, the first atom to bond with another as the explosion of the chaos universe began to slow. That original process is still inside us, still inside me, even as I sit here waiting to be saved by someone else's work. Tonight, I heard the tolling of a bell I heard words trapped in a box. I heard that a woman upstairs was wrapped in plastic and that somebody won a prize. I think I need to choose a new perspective beyond the frames and walls and 
personalities, beyond the references of myself. I wonder if it's too late to inform the organizers that I will be needing them to remove the roof of the building. I think it will help if we can all more clearly see that we are in fact among the actual stars. That the measurement and decoration of size and time and distance are absurd. Notice how the macrocosm eerily resembles the microcosm. We are swimming in the infinite. And that which plays upon our senses ought to at least express some evidence of this. But despite all that, how does one become a lover of urgency? This is all part of the context for my piece. I guess I should also think about what I'm going to wear. Friday. Two days to go. It's time to get to work. I have a trance to conjure. <laughs> How does one go about completely escaping the physical? No time for engineers. Must try via derangement of the senses. Must ignore gravity. Must see between particles and move between waves. Must register only that which channels the sacred space dust. Must surf what moves and disregard what doesn't. Must also curate sound. What works for me at home is when I curl up in bed with my arms around my fabric bunny rabbit, I close my eyes and try to float forward into the darkness of my eyelids, then through them and free of my body altogether, through the walls, through the organization of thought, through time. I open my eyes and I am back here again at the turtle. I see Katie rolling and twisting her body against the wall, marking the physical space directly with herself, confronting it. I feel. I relate. I am exposed by this. I am briefly scared. I am weightless. I no longer feel contained by the building. What feels true feels more immense than being. And then there is feeling itself to transcend. And indeed, consciousness. I guess we all do that eventually. Disperse into sub-particles and return to the lake of pure abstraction. The ultimate rebellion against the confines of matter and maybe to not quite want that, but to stand on its line asking questions, is to reach for an understanding of creation, to defend the spark at its very origin, to make oneself available to the great beyond, get just close enough to steal a lock of its hair, and then return to the living world with your findings. Like the teller of dreams, to act on material with immaterial intentions. To smudge the line that defines existence. To reconstruct the first understandings from scratch. To retrace everything looking for clues. Voila, that's the job. Now I'm going home to hold my rabbit. Saturday, my last day. Gosh, I guess I made a little bit of a mess in here last night. Star sauce all over the floors, and cellular deconstruction, particle physics and post-consciousness everywhere. I can't seem to find my sense of being in a place. That's okay. I'm not so worried about here. Michael's turtle space has served its role as sanctuary. I have been reminded that I still like art and still want to live. I'm a little more concerned about out there, 
after Art Week is over and we pour back into the streets and suddenly it's all right outside that door. <laughs> the everything, the awful, the reason, the loss, the nameless, the true. Out where we live every day under the weight of 200,000 years, wrapped in so many layers of context that we can no longer see the only one. Where we demand of each other constantly money, time, food, survival. Yet even in demanding life itself, we share such little ambition. When we could demand transcendences, metaphysical satisfactions, freedom from lives, deaths, selves measured by the attainment of resource, we could look to each other for a new divinity out there where we barely look each other in the eye. Tonight, in this space, one of my favorite dancers is in conversation with the wind. And my friend says that not even death is a real escape from anything. Still, tomorrow I will have to leave here. I, I live only a few blocks away, but between here and there, a great wind howls. The temperature drops. The city groans with indifference. Every inch of space, every minute of poetry will have to be negotiated. We will have to decide each day on what terms we are willing to perceive each other. The winter is coming. I offer you my heart. I'll see you all under the sky.